Hello everybody and welcome to the tutorial on a new brush category in Painter 2022 called Sumier Watercolor. Okay, now it's different from the regular Sumier Build-Up category in that it uses all watercolor brushes. So you get a little bit more of a feeling of Sumier by using watercolor. It would be similar to ink as well. Now, what I have set up is I have my canvas locked because I want to keep my canvas really, really clean. The next layer is uh, I've added surface texture and just added the texture of the Italian watercolor so that it looks kind of like I'm working on Italian watercolor paper. I've also locked it so that I won't brush on it. And then I add a, oops, I don't want to lock that, a watercolor layer because all of these brushes are watercolor. Now, there are a couple of things that you want to pay a lot of attention to. You want to pay attention to the shape. That will tell you what the dab profile looks like, but it will also tell you whether or not apply dab stencil has been taken into consideration. And it could be paper, flow map, or um, texture. Now, if I go over here to the flow maps, I've selected a flow map called Free Flow, which means that there's nothing on it. So even if this brush uses flow maps, it would not uh, use, uh, it would not put any kind of texture down. And then you want to look at however you have your papers. Okay, let's see if there was anything else I need to know. You want to pay attention to dry your watercolor layer, or maybe you want to do a pause diffusion. Those are all important uses of watercolor. So if we go to the first brush, which is called a liner brush, and I'm using this kind of olive green, you can paint light or thinly and increase your pressure to get thick. Now you really have to be able to do this. If you cannot go from this light to thick pressure like that, then play with your brush tracking and make sure that it works. I also have this uh, rectangular selection here. And I have that here because watercolor cannot be restrained with a selection. And if the watercolor is going to bleed, it will bleed out. If it does not come out of these edges, that means this watercolor brush doesn't really spread very much, okay? So this is a linear brush, and it's really very smooth and fun to play with. The next brush is called Variable Flat. Now, if I put that Variable Flat down here in the corner, ta-da! it's going to run beyond the lines, which will allow you to see how runny it is. All right, so we can, I'm going to mark pause diffusion. And we'll do this again. And I'm going to go to an orange. We'll make it bright. Now you can see that because it's replace, it replaces all of that color. Now if I take the pause diffusion and release it, they're going to blend into each other and kind of get this nice flow of color uh, into color. It's very wet into wet sort of look. Now if we do the pause diffusion again and close that off, and then let go of it so we get uh, the green flowing. And as soon as it's finished, uh, now because it's taking a while to flow on my computer, my computer's really fast, these brushes are going to be somewhat slow. Okay. 
And if we do that over the top, you're going to get these lines. You're still going to get what looks like blending of color, but you're not going to get those uh, soft lines between the two. Okay? So let's go to the next brush, which is Grainy Wash. And now I'm not going to do as much with the variations here. I'm just going to uh, kind of show you the gist of the brush. Now this wash brush is really quite beautiful. And it, it is also replaced in that you can come back with light strokes and cover up areas. Now this brush doesn't bleed and yet it has a real nice blending inside of itself. Okay, so we go to the next one, which is Worn and Dry. Worn and Dry is one of those brushes that you can make strokes with. It has a worn appearance and it's fairly dry. So if I make a heavy coat here, it's not really going to fly out. Now I'm going to put this, color, this brush stroke right there and let it do its thing. And the reason I did that is because the next one is called Dry Leaves. And Dry Leaves are similar to uh, that brush except that the end result looks smoother. So we have dry brush and a smooth. Okay, so let's go to grainy bristle. Grainy bristle, it's, it's, it's bristly. You know, you can see the bristle. That bristle is going to run together though and smooth out. So if you let that go, see how it blends together and it looks really nice and smooth. That's a fun brush. Grainy Bamboo is similar, but this one is using... You, you have to, if you, if you want it to have texture, you're going to have to use uh, a flow map that has some texture to it. Remember, we're using the flow map that's free flow. Okay. So a lot of times if it says grainy and you're not getting grainy, then that's the reason. And this is grainy leaves. Oops. And you can make nice bamboo leaves with something like this. And the next one is Flowing Objects. Now that one is only going to work if it really takes doing the paper and the flow map the same thing. Now this is a flow map that I had previously made. And the scale is 25,419, and over here in papers, the scale is 25,419. So the scale is the same. Now, the brush size is small. If I hit reset, it will go up to 50, but you'll, you'll use this brush better if you use it small. And if I just put it there, it begins to flow into the flow map and the paper. If I kind of do a round and round, I begin to see something that could be flower-like. Okay, so then if I wanted to put another color in there, I just put it in like that. 
All right, so this one depends a lot on the paper and flow map working together. And we're back to where we were. And the next one is Scumble. And it does use flow map as well. And if you put something over like that, it's going to blend in. It's a great way to do some sort of soft backgrounds with the Scumble brush. Organic. It is the sort of splashing color. And notice that it's a, a dark green. But if I lighten up and I flow slowly, you see how the ch color changes? Let's make it really dramatic. Okay. So now slow gives you the pink, fast gives you the green, okay? Heavier pressure gives you a little bit darker color, but you can see they're, they're going from one to the other. So I could do something like this. Sort of like that, and you get a, a, a nice kind of variations of the colors. Okay, so we go to the next one, which is Grainy Pickup. Oh, shoot. I should have left Organic down. So we'll put some more back down, and we'll go to Grainy Pickup. And let's go to kind of a yellow. Ta-da! And it picks up the color, and you can get it. You can get it where it's almost. See a, a really soft pickup like that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so that is grainy pickup. Leaf blade. I'm gonna go black for leaf. No, I'm not. Let's go to a dark green. Now, leaf blade, it is like a blade of leaf, like this up here. But if you go fast with it, not like that. If you go fast with it, you're going to get a smooth kind of line. And if you go slow, you're going to get this kind of wavy line. So somewhere in between is important. So we go up and let that come down, up and let that come down a little bit. So I've got two leaves going there. But this is also a very br versatile brush. So if I turn it around, I can do something like this. And I'm beginning to have a f iris here. See? Kind of like an iris. Okay. So we go now to Rigor Remove. And it is like you're taking something hard and scratching the watercolor off. And the last one is uh, re-wet. So this is dry at the moment. But if I were to go in here and just touch where that, where the paint is, it would begin to bleed. 
Now, again, the paper would be really important here. So this paper is uh, set up with scale at 400, the contrast at 400, and the brightness at about 24. And uh, that will give us, uh, excuse me, that will give us a re-wet, but it's also going to run down the lines of the paper. See how I just broke that up and began to run down. Now we could use any number of papers for this and get something different every time. Okay, so that is all of the brushes that we've gone through. I hope you like them so far. And let's get rid of this uh, one. And now I have this one. And so I'm going to start with bamboo, grainy bamboo. And it uses, there we go. All right, so it's using flow map. So I want to come over here and I want to change the flow map to something like that, something a little bit more uh, intense. And I'm going to bring the brightness down a little more. And the contrast is way up. And let's go to black. Okay, so if I wanted to do a bamboo stroke, I would just make bamboo lines like that, okay? And, and you would see this sort of texture. Now I would go back to the linear tool and I would come in here and sort of begin to get the segments Uh, looking okay. I didn't like that. The reason I didn't like it is because it was kind of loosely done. That would be enough. That would be enough. And We'll do a little bit longer one there. Okay, now the the leaves come off uh, the bamboo in the edge here. Like that would be some bamboo. Now I'm going to put the other one over here on this side. They, in most of the bamboo that I've ever looked at, the leaves are opposite. Okay, now we're going to go to, let's go to dry leaves. And I'm going to go up a little bit and then down, around like that. And we'll come up here and do another one. A little bit too big. And then we'll come up here and we'll just do a few more of these. Now, I'm really not teaching how to do Sumie. There's lots of videos online 
and uh, other kind of information that you can get that would be uh, good to do, especially if you're trying to do what I am here. Okay, so you get the idea of how this works. Uh, this is uh, the way I would use the brushes, and I hope uh, you enjoy this category, and I hope the tutorial was helpful for you. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.